Hi, I'm Scott Wright, Professor of Clarinet at the University of Kentucky. And today we're going to talk a little bit about clarinet embouchure. So we're going to cover some basics for those of you who are just starting out. And we'll also talk about a couple of advanced techniques for, for uh, those of you who are already skilled players that might be able to help tweak your embouchure and make uh, your tone qualities and the flexibility of your technique even better. First of all, when we talk about clarinet embouchure, we're, we're dealing with four four basic concepts, the teeth, the lips, the cheeks, and the chin. Okay, so let's start with the teeth. For most of us who play single lip embouchure, we're going to actually go ahead and put our top teeth right down on top of the mouthpiece. I really recommend getting the mouthpiece pad. They sell them for a buck, a couple bucks. Uh, clear plastic ones are the, are the mouthpiece pads I, I prefer. And they help give your teeth a little bit of grip on the mouthpiece and they also help preserve your mouthpiece. Over a long period of time your teeth will actually wear out the mouthpiece. So this is a great uh, equipment saving device. So top teeth are on top of the mouthpiece. The bottom teeth are covered by the red fleshy part of your lower lip. So we have something that looks like that. In general, we don't want to see a lot of the, the lip down on the bottom. We want that tucked under. Um, next, the cheeks are not blown out like that. They're pulled in and the chin is pulled down. From the tip of the chin to the bottom lip, there's actually a concave surface. It goes in and it goes out, just like a concave curve so that the, the clarinet embouchure looks something like this. And then when we blow air into the horn, it's a nice, easy embouchure. A couple myths about the embouchure. I hear uh, uh, young players especially tell me all the time, their band directors tell them that their, their embouchure is supposed to be tight. And I just really don't want you to think of the word tight because when we make this embouchure overly tight or pulled or stretched in an artificial sense, it does some things to our sound that we are really not uh, hoping to, to uh, have uh, in our sound. It makes it the, the pitch very, very bright and sharp. It also makes the, the tone very inflexible and brittle so that we get... It's very small, we get these squeals. You can, you can tell if you look at yourself in the mirror and you see everything exaggerated and pulled overly tight. That's not what we're, we're after. We're after a firm embouchure. So we set the face, we pull the corners in, and we create the sound. Never should it really feel tight and overly stressed or tense. The next thing uh, with regard to the embouchure is how much clarinet mouthpiece do we actually put in? And my stock answer for this is as much as possible. We want to get as much of the surface area of this reed working for us as we possibly can. So very easy trick uh, to find out what that optimum uh, amount of mouthpiece in the mouth is, is we simply blow an open G and we push mouthpiece in until we get a squeak. Cover your ears. Okay, at that point, we've gone too far. So I go to that point, I get the squeak, and I pull out a little bit. That's going to ensure that you've got, you've got plenty of mouthpiece in the mouth, you've got plenty of reworking for you, and that you're going to produce a nice, easy sound and a big, full, resonant tone on top of that. Um, the next, next thing I want to talk a little bit about is the upper lip. As I go around and do clinics at junior highs and high schools and even colleges, I find a lot of people uh, have the embouchure form pretty much the right way. The lower lip looks good, the cheeks are in, there's a nice firm pull uh, of the corners of the mouth. But then I'll ask the students, so what's the upper lip supposed to do? And, and frequently I get sort of blanks to upper lip. I don't know what the upper lip is supposed to do. Uh, the upper lip is a very important job. In fact, when we think of an embouchure, we like to think of pressure or strength or support coming from all 360 degrees of the opening. 
A lot of youngsters play with too much pressure coming from the bottom up. So they really they pinch and they push up on the reed and we get squeaks and squawks. But I want to get the upper lip into the game of, of supporting uh, our clarinet tone. So if, if you're one of those players that when you play, you can see a lot of your upper lip, you see the red fleshy part of the upper lip, then you're probably not using your upper lip at all to help support the tone. Um, you want to get rid of the upper lip in terms of, of what we can see visibly so that we can get the musculature of this area involved with the support. So simple, simple uh, uh, procedure for this is I tell my students to make a chipmunk face and pull the top lip up like that. Then what I want them to do is make the clarinet put the horn in, and then gradually let the upper lip come down like this. So I make my chipmunk face. And I let that upper lip fall down. And what happens, suddenly I'm able to use the upper lip, the upper lip, the strength of this area, the musculature, to help offer support. That way the support of the armature is really coming from all around as opposed to bottom up. So again. Okay, so when I'm playing, you really don't see upper lip or bottom lip. They're curved in so that we get the uh, good controlled musculature. One last thing uh, for you to consider, and, and this uh, I see this problem with a lot of people, um, no matter what age they are, is that in general, we're just playing too tight. And so I'll ask the question, how much external embouchure pressure should we apply to make a beautiful clarinet tone, okay? And again, the answer is going to be just enough. And what that means is we just want to apply enough pressure of 360 degrees so that when we push some air through the instrument, the embouchure strength will grab just enough to make the uh, reed vibrate. If we have too little pressure, we get an out of focus, sort of fuzzy uh, tone quality that's really quite undesirable. If we have too much external embouchure pressure, we get a bright, squealy, squeaky sound. So a little exercise that I like to do, and I use uh, this exercise uh, uh, many times actually during the course of a week while I'm teaching, is I'll have my students start a note and I want them to start with no embouchure pressure and gradually bring in more strength of the embouchure wrap or the external embouchure, I call it, until they get a sound. Then I want them to keep adding pressure and keep adding pressure until the sound goes away. This way we see on a continuum from no pressure to complete pressure all the various tone qualities and pitches that we might might be able to obtain. So take a listen. This is going to sound a little odd. So on one side of the continuum we had no sound, or fuzzy sound. The other side of the continuum where there was too much pressure, we had no sound or completely pinched sound. Some place in the middle, we call it the sweet spot, where there's just enough. To produce a really lovely, sweet, resonant, focused sound with, with very little effort or stress or strain. Uh, to wrap up, when we talk about amateur, we think teeth, lips, cheeks, and chin. We think of getting the muscles from all around, all three, six, 360 degrees of our mouth involved so that not one single muscle group has to uh, be overly taxed or overly burdened. We want to get the mouthpiece in our mouth a fair way so that we've got plenty of the reed working for us. And then we want to apply just enough external embouchure pressure to produce, produce a tone quality. You'd think.
follow those simple tips, you'll be well on your way to producing a beautiful, flexible, uh, lovely clarinet tone. Good luck, and let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Practice hard. Hello everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new today. If you have not already subscribed, please make sure you hit that uh, button on your screen and become a subscriber to this channel.